Sundal Sandberg is an architecture studio based in Sweden, founded in 1995 by Thomas Sundal and O. Sandberg. And the firm delivers a wide range of projects and solutions with strong ideas that essentially add value. And we are joined today by Johannes Strandlin, an architect at Sandal Sandberg, and we will be discussing about crafting architectural identity that lasts over time. So thank you so much, Johan, for joining us. Thank you. So much fun to be here. It's our pleasure. Will you first tell us about your background and then about the studio as well? Well, as you said, uh, we were founded in 1995 by uh, Thomas Sundell and Ulf Sandberg uh, around the idea that everything communicates. We were one of the first offices in Sweden to combine the, uh, the idea of advertising with architecture and make that into a seamless synergy. Uh, and it has allowed us to evolve over the years to take on a lot of fun projects in various scales. That's amazing. So how would you describe your design approach and what inspired it? Well, we always look for ways to try to find a new classic, so to say. And uh, Thomas Sandel has always been very inspired by the Scandinavian greats like Alvar Aalto and uh, Ralph Erskine. Uh, and you could kind of say that we, we always look for the timeless the timeless quality that we think is going to be great in 50 years mm -hmm. and but we also always try to add like a fun twist to it so there that there is something joyful about the design as well mm -hmm. how do you immerse craftsmanship to make a lasting design well that's a great question it's maybe it's the the big question that all architects think about like what what is what is truly timeless architecture? Uh, and it, it's a hard one to answer, but I think that uh, a big part of what is timeless is to try to create things that give a very strong emotional response to people. Because if people care about it in the future, they're also gonna take care of it and it creates sustainability in that, world, in that way as well. Uh, so kind, kind of like the, what I said in the last question that you look for something that has this sort of emotional quality that you think will last over the years uh, we, regardless of what happens to current trends and future trends uh, and then with the craftsmanship that's uh, also one of the most important layers because on the one hand you have the form that you want the form language to be strong and instantly recognizable to people and give them an emotional connection to it uh, but you also need the quality that the detailing gives you from craftsmanship that you that you can come up close to it and truly feel that this is something that someone cared about when they created it. So I, I think that generally uh, timeless architecture comes from a good combination of form language and aesthetic and execution with strong craftsmanship. Mm, yeah, that's amazing. Um, so in what ways do you balance personality, playfulness, creativity and craftsmanship? all together to make an architectural identity that reflects and maybe empower people as well? Well, I guess with um, empowering people, maybe more so in the larger scale, like when we consider uh, urban planning projects or very big construction projects, we, even when the scale is really big, we always make sure to think about the little person in the context. Like when you have a, a huge site, uh, and there is always a lot of big problems to think about and uh, questions regarding cost and efficiency and stuff like that. But we always make sure to think about the, the tiny fabric of the site as well. Like, how will it feel like to sit on a bench under this particular tree? How will you experience this at night? Uh, and always keep that in mind, regardless if it's a little villa project in the archipelago or if it's a um, like, for example, in, in the north of Sweden now with the huge industrial uh, sustainability projects going on there, that we make sure how we can combine the existing fabric of society with the new construction to make sure that it, it blends properly with the, what we add. Mm. So now, uh, since also the firm has been around for a long time, I'm curious, how do you approach sustainability across the different skills that you work on? It's an interesting question. That's also, to us, we feel like the good design is very much connected to sustainability because it is, it is often talked about as sort of this um, 
uh, a very technical thing sometimes. Like you talk about sustainability as uh, this sort of uh, very, very technical aspect of construction, which is which is true, of course. I mean, in all in all bigger projects, we have a lot of complex uh, complex technicalities to make sure that we fulfill all the uh, sustainability demands, uh, and also always considering wood as a construction material, for example. But to us, the the core of sustainability really comes down to creating design that. Uh, gives people a response that they want to take care of it for a long time. For example, one one good, um, a great example of that is uh, there's this restaurant uh, that uh, Thomas designed, I think it was 30 years ago, called the Rolf's, Kjök, uh, Rolf's Kitchen in Stockholm. Uh, and the interior has been the same ever since. So if you consider how often interiors are switched regarding to different uh, current trends in society, we think that that's uh, that's a true example of real sustainability when you when you actually take care of something for that long. Uh, so I, I think it goes back to uh, the, the effort of always trying to make sort of a new classic that people will care about in the future. Because then, when when all of the existing sustainability technology we have now has become obsolete and we have uh, way better technology in the future. The, the sign in our willing to care about what we created is what will truly last, we think. Yeah, yeah, I agree, you know, with the many trends and like, if we constantly wanting to follow a certain trend, uh, it will not last a long time, right? So that yeah. drives the need to, you know, refurbish or renovate, just costing the environment so much. Yeah. But it's a, it's a challenge. Like you, you always want to keep it fresh as well. We always want it to feel like uh, we have added a freshness to something. But as I said, you you really need to make sure that you think that this freshness you add is something that can also stand once the the novelty has worn off, so to say. Yeah, I do agree. Will you sh then share more about the Big Benzino Floating Sauna project and what did you try to achieve through the design? Yeah, it was a it was a really really fun experience. It was um, uh, truly a celebration to craftsmanship all throughout. That we we had this uh, quite playful form uh, inspired by taking in the views of the ar archipelago and uh, also creating a very dramatic sense of space when you have the closeness above the fire and then it sort of just rises up to the sky. Uh, but what what kind of became the core. The core principle throughout the project was to create then a feeling of a completely new experience, but also something that has been around forever. Like we didn't want it to feel like something that came fresh off a factory with the feeling of uh, manufacturedness, but rather almost as if you just saw it at the horizon and it just kind of popped up in the middle of a mist cloud. So that that was kind of like the the constant theme throughout the design in order to get all of the detailings just right. Uh, and I think it's fun. I'm not sure how well it communicates in the in the images, but it's fun that when you when you actually experience it up close, it really has a very timeless uh, feeling to it. Like every everything is wood and steel and it's uh, made by hand. So there is no sort of um, factory feel to anything which is really cool actually mm. yeah it looks really cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh it's also incredible actually to the the roof terrace is um it's so high above the water line so that when you sit up on the roof terrace in dur during the process we mainly thought about the idea of um, uh, entertaining guests and sort of this social interaction but then uh, once it was set to sea and I sat up at the roof terrace all by myself. It was a very interesting experience to be alone up there with the quietness from the, like the distance created from the water line, mm -hmm. uh, erased all the noises from the engines. It, it feels like you're almost floating above the sea in total quiet, which is really cool actually. Yeah, it's, I think it's a, an example of an architecture that transcends, you know, like you have to experience it to be able to really feel and immerse in, you know, the environment as well, the ambiance, atmosphere altogether. One of the 
one of the most difficult uh, parts of it was to get the, the, the sauna oven, the central core of it. Uh, we, we built it from hand with wow. the great help of the blacksmith uh, in order to get the glass in all directions. But the best part of that uh, discovered almost when it was done is that then you can actually see the fire from the outside. So if you are on another boat and go by it at night, uh, you can see the, the glow of the fire throughout in all directions, which is, it's a bit hard to capture on images, but it looks incredible. <laughs> wow, I can imagine. So lastly, how do you see the role of craftsmanship playing a part in promoting thoughtful design and architecture in the future? I think uh, all of us as architects have a strong responsibility here because I think that I learned that a lot myself in this process and I think it's true for many other projects that we have the ability and also responsibility to suggest craftsmanship solutions and to really promote craftsmanship as much as we can because it's a, it's a skill set that uh, could be at risk of uh, dying unless uh, we as architects and as society value it because if we always look for the mass produced and most simple solution then there won't be any people who know how to make these fantastic uh, things that actually give us true sustainability so i i hope uh, i hope that we keep care about uh, craftsmanship in the future and that all architects to do their part in uh, making sure we have a great uh, collaboration with blacksmiths and carpenters and such. Yeah, and also in an effort to preserve tradition, it also might be something that, you know, as you said before, sparks emotional connection, right? Especially if you're from the area or it sparks familiarity to the people who receives it. Yeah, it will be creating something that lasts a long time, right? It's it's one of those uh, things too that's uh, true in all scales as well. It's Regardless if it's a chair or if it's a skyscraper, you're still going to feel the, the detailing that's uh, in front of you. Yeah. And that's going to make a difference if you feel like the chair is cheap or that you like it. And it's going to make the difference if the skyscraper feels uh, sterile or if it feels taken care of. Mm. So it's, it's truly one of those uh, things that transcends all, uh, all parts of architecture and design, I think. Yeah, I do agree. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much for sharing today. I uh, had a great time learning about the studio, about your approach, and wish you all the best. Thank you, too.